Hey friends, this is Michael Bohm with Youth Apologetics Training. For the last few days, we've been talking about the ancient astronaut theory, and today we're going to keep going on that series. Uh, I want to make a correction, something I, I mentioned yesterday about Zechariah Sitchin and his story about the Anunnaki that came to Earth and they genetically engineered the human race. And I mentioned there at the end that there was some kind of a, a catastrophe and they had to leave the, the planet. You know, I knew this before. I've read this guy's writings before way long ago, probably over uh, 10, probably 15 years ago. I've been reading some of his stuff, but I forgot a really important detail. Uh, according to Zechariah Sitchin, uh, he believes that these Anunnaki left planet Earth because of a global flood. Uh, similar, well, exactly similar to what the Bible talks about, a global flood, except that he doesn't say that God sent the flood. But I just thought I'd make that correction because it's kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, today we're going to talk about ancient artifacts, artwork, cave paintings, statues, stuff that ancient astronaut proponents believe is good evidence that uh, aliens have visited this planet before and quite possibly created life here. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, there's another guy, Robert Temple. And just in short, he, he contends that uh, there is a preserved account of an extraterrestrial visitation about 5,000 years ago to the Dogon people of northwestern Mali. I don't know if you pronounce that doggone people or I don't know. But anyway, uh, so he's got he's got his own theory about visitations from ancient astronauts. You have uh, Richard Hoagland. I mentioned him earlier. And guys, he as far as my encounters with this movement, I've for the most part, Richard Hoagland is the guy that I have uh, listened to the most by far. And this guy believes that there were civilizations that have existed on the moon, Mars, some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. And he teaches or believes that NASA has been involved in this huge cover-up to make sure that everybody doesn't realize that there are aliens out there in outer space. In fact, he has in one of his videos that I watched where he talked about this supposed uh, city on Mars called, he calls it Cydonia. And it is a little interesting. I, I will at least tell you a little bit about it. During one of the satellite passes over Mars, a bunch of pictures were snapped of an area that does appear to have some structures on Mars. Have you guys ever heard of this face? I've seen all kinds of pictures of it. And it's kind of a garbled, weird looking face. But Richard Hoagland does this little trick on his videos where he'll hold a mirror up to one side of the face. You know what I'm saying? So that if you hold it, if you were to hold a mirror right at the middle of the face so that it projects the one side of the face over to the other side. So you get a full face, okay? Um, but, but that full face is, is only represented by half the actual face on Mars. You get a human face. But then if you flip that mirror over and do a mirror image of the other side of the face, you get a lion's face. <laughs> okay, when you see it in the video, uh, unless you're smoking something, you're looking at it and you're thinking, okay, that, that's a stretch. That's a stretch, Richard. But nonetheless, that's what he's done. Whatever the case, and I think I remember he sa him saying something along the lines of, you know, the, the pyramid of the largest temple, one of the corners is pointing true north oriented from Mars, the pole on Mars. You know, I don't know. I don't know. And there was a bunch of other structures that he had a big to-do about. Uh, again, I'm, I'm just going off memory here, and I might actually have a couple of my facts backwards. I'm just trying to give you guys a feel for this movement. But Richard Hoagland has some bizarre hyperdimensional theories that he's come up with. And again, they're, they're connected to this whole 
19.5 degrees, which is, if I remember right, it's, it's the spot at which uh, a tetrahedron, its corners will touch the outside of a sphere. If you were to put a pyramid inside of a sphere, its points will touch at 19.5 degrees on, on the sphere. And a tetrahedron, uh, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a star of David. Okay. If you were to do a two dimensional version of a tetrahedron, hidden, you'd be looking at a star of David, you know, that, that triangle pointing upward and then another triangle put right on top of the one pointed upward, put another triangle pointing down. And it's like a six pointed star, by the way, that's also referred to as a hexagram in witchcraft. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, whatever the case, some people would say that uh, these witches copied God. Um, this hexagram, I don't believe, comes from David. It might have come from Solomon later in his life, but I don't think it comes from David. It is a symbol that is used in some of the dirtier, nastier, darker groups practicing witchcraft. It is a hexagram. Okay, that's where that comes from. I would not hang one of those from my neck, and I would not put one of those on the back of my car. But, um, and it has nothing to do with me being anti-Israel. I love the people of Israel, and, and I have nothing, nothing against Israel at all. Okay, I support them. But that symbol, uh, I would, if I was them, I'd be trying to get away from that. That's not something that you want to be associated with. But anyway, okay, so that's the two-dimensional version of the tetrahedron. Well, what, what if you took the same concept, a pyramid, the kind of the three-dimensional version of a triangle, right? And then you had one pyramid facing up and another pyramid facing down, and you put them on kind of intersecting on top of each other, you would create a tetrahedron, and then they would place that, uh, Hoagland places that inside of a sphere, and where those points touch the sphere, that's where you hit 19.5 degrees. And he makes a big deal about 19.5 degrees, and that's where we have points, this is his arguments, not mine, okay? I'm not going with this at all, but he argues that at 19.5 degrees around our planet, we have hot spots of high energy, uh, hyper-dimensional energy, okay? And it is true, I mean, it is true that there are some spots at 19.5 degrees on our planet that, like, we have a large vo a volcano, uh, Mauna Loa, Ma Mauna Loa, uh, on, on the island of Hawaii, but, you know, and, and okay, on Jupiter, you've got that big red spot, that giant superstorm, okay, uh, that's at 19.5, but I think it's still kind of a stretch, okay, I mean, if you were to put it, if you were to say that the triangle actually touched it, I don't know, 20.5, you could probably find something big at 20.5 on a lot of places on planet Earth as well. I, I think that that's just stretching it. So anyway, Hoagland has all kinds of government conspiracies, all kinds of NASA cover-ups, pretty interesting stuff, makes for a great rabbit trail, but this guy is very anti-God in his own round and about way. And well, anyway, that's Richard Hoagland in a nutshell. And there are many others, like we have the Raelian cult, this group of people that, again, believe that aliens created life on this planet. And uh, the guy that found this movement, Claude Vorilin, everybody calls him Rael, he calls these ancient astronauts the Elohim. Huh. Very interesting. Uh, more on that later. <laughs> I'm tempted to go down a rabbit trail again here. More on that later. So those are some of the names that are involved with this movement. Some of the other things that they'll point out, and 
a lot of you have seen this. There's all kinds of ancient artwork, for example. There's cave paintings with what appears to be little gray men with big black eyes and creepy oval heads, right? You know, the typical gray alien pictures that you see nowadays. You see stuff like that on cave walls. Uh, you see cave paintings of what appear to be, again, appear to be flying saucer type things, okay? Uh, and I'm going to be posting a lot of these pictures on the posts as I'm going through this series because I want to I get as many of them as I can on different various posts just so you guys can get a feel and a flavor for this whole movement. Um, so be sure to come to my website every day and check out those posts so you can see the pictures. Um, but there's, there's all kinds of uh, artwork, a lot of Catholic-looking artwork, different various uh, works of art that I will also show you pictures where it looks like there is a spaceship in the background. And one particular painting, there's even a guy standing there looking up in the sky with a dumbfounded look on his face like, what is that? Okay, and I'll show you a picture of this too. There is, there's some hieroglyphs at Abedos, Egypt. And there's one particular one. Again, I'll put a picture of it. There looks like there's some spaceships on it. I kid you not. I mean, there's clearly what appears to be like a wasp or something. But then you look over to the right of it and it there is a perfect i mean it is crazy a perfect depiction of of like a modern helicopter bizarre you got to see it and then there's this other to the right of the helicopter looking thing is another thing that kind of looks like the little hovercraft thing that you see in uh, the beginning of star wars not that i've ever seen that movie but that scene where you have luke skywalker and obi-wan kenobi and i think r2d2 uh, hovering around in the, in the desert and this little brown thing, this little brown hover car thing. There's, there's something that looks like that. And then right below that, there's another thing that looks like some kind of strange fat looking spaceship. So you, you can't deny that there is some very interesting likenesses there. Again, it, that's just appearances. Okay. It doesn't mean that's what you're actually seeing. Um, we have a figurine from Japan that is called the Dogu figurine, and it kind of looks really weird, but some people think that it looks like, or they at least think it looks like what an ancient astronaut might have looked like. Uh, kind of has the look of maybe wearing a spacesuit of some kind with a helmet, big buggy eyes. And really, this stuff goes on and on and on. There's all kinds of weird paintings and statues. Like, there's a painting that I will, again, put on the website of somebody named Rama, who's being welcomed back to Ayodhya, Ayodhya, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, in what appears to be a flying car. If you look at it, it looks more like a boat that is being held aloft by ducks or swans I, I can't make it out but they look like birds to me it's like birds flying a boat <laughs> filled with people but anyway uh that looks like it's coming from hindu mythology and there's all kinds of uh statues and paintings depicting men that okay uh, this is such a stretch but some of them have the appearance of wearing some kind of spaceman helmet type thing all right you know, different various like Mayan and Aztec looking headdresses, but they will say, no, those, those look like space helmets to me. Well, <laughs> again, just trying to depict or give you guys a feeling of what kind of evidence they're using here to support this, this theory. And then we've got these weird, creepy, elongated skulls that have been dug up in Peru, uh, uh, near the Nazca lines, all right, creepy looking things. And it kind of depicts eerily enough what you might expect, you know, these gray aliens that you always hear about and the, the pictures people draw. It depicts what almost looks like a gray's skull. But uh, many people argue that these, these people would actually artificially 
elongate their skulls. They would bind their head in some way that would cause their skull to, to, to stretch out. And again, I'll, I'll put pictures of these skulls on the website. It, they're fascinating. You got to see them. But in fact, uh, in Brian Godawa's fictional uh, series, he's got a couple books out now. I've only read half of one of them called Noah Primeval. If you want a really wild sci-fi Christian weird book, take you on a trip, that's for sure, of a pre-flood world coming from the mind of Brian Godawa. He does have a group of people who are trying to emulate these fallen angels by making their skulls look like them. Very interesting. A fun book, by the way. Okay. And guys, I don't want to bore you. I could really, a person could go for hours talking about these artifacts, various statues, artwork, painting, stuff like that. You could just go on and on and on. Uh, you can search the internet, look at this stuff. You can also look at my website. I'm going to post different pictures of this stuff. Tomorrow, we're going to start looking at a different perspective. And friends, we will don our tinfoil hats. I'm going to tell you right now, I do not necessarily agree with the conclusions of, of these Christians. We're going to be looking at some Christian perspectives on the uh, alien thing, okay? Who are these aliens, if they're even real at all? Well, I've already mentioned before, there are Christians that believe that some of these sightings are actually fallen angels impersonating these beings from outer space. And so we're going to talk about that. Like I said before, that really, I don't think is too far out of the question when you start looking at the fact that God said that Satan and his ministers would appear as ministers of light. Uh, you see Paul mentioning in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 9, I believe, that uh, if we or an angel preach any other gospel than that which we have preached, let him be accursed, as in sometimes fallen angels will preach a, a false gospel or, or some kind of a lie. We have Mohammed saying that the angel Gabriel came to him and gave him the Quran. We have Joseph Smith saying that the angel Moroni came to him and gave him uh, uh, basically the Book of Mormon at a different time. But anyway, um, we have all these different channelers claiming contact with different beings. Friends, I, I don't think that's too far of the question, but... We're going to talk about some really wild stuff. We're going to take it way farther. And again, like I was saying, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm going to present it as they present it so you guys understand their perspective. Okay? And uh, anyway, with that, come out to the website, youthapologeticstraining.com, and there you guys can leave comments and questions. Uh, I'd love to talk to you guys. Also, you can catch me on Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. And with that, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.